Sometimes it's hard to remember how far you've come. It's hard to remember what it's like when you aren't on top. The struggle, the grind, the mindset. Sometimes I wonder how things could have turned out. If someone showed me an easier way, it's hard to look back on some of the pain and betrayal that got me here. But in the end, it has made me the man I am today. I have to remind myself, not everyone is like the El Guapo. Sometimes it's okay to play fast and loose. Other times, I realize a lot of you aren't out there trying to break records, shake hands, and kiss babies like the El Guapo. Some of you are out there looking for a good time, an easy time, looking for a way to relax and wind down. The changes to mining have really cramped your style. You used to come to stand to do a few runs, have a couple suds, make a fistful of credits. Now, what the hell has Chris done to your favorite pastime? Why did he have to get in there and ruin it with wild instabilities and, well, don't even get me started on the inconsistencies. What if I told you I have a solution for you, for all my fellow coffin dodgers and laid-back compatriots? No need for fast twitch muscle movements here. Let's take things easy and make a killing while doing it. Let's start with the newest changes to the rocks. A few nights ago, Chris did a server upgrade that changed the way mining works completely. I don't see anyone talking about this, yet this update totally changed the consistency of your mining experience. Before, I knew what size rocks I could break with specific lasers purely by trial and error. It took a lot of first-hand experience to figure it out, but now, it seems that the numbers are actually reliable. The max size rock a single laser can break has been, well, for the lack of a better word, nerfed. From the darkness this brought, it also brought a consistency to builds that hasn't been around since pre-319. Now, based on the resistance and mass of the rock and the power of your laser, you can consistently figure out what it takes for you to break a specific rock every single time. To do this, you take your total laser power with your modules running and divide that by 0.2. Then depending on the rock and your resistance modifiers, you subtract the final resistance percentage from the mass you got from your calculation. This will get you a close estimate of the amount of power needed. To break this down a little clearer, I'll give you an example. We'll use a Helix 2 laser, two surge modules and a stampede. The two surge modules will give you 100% more power. A stampede gives you 35% more power. The base power of the Helix is 4,080. With all these modules running, it comes to 9,588 power. Now divide that by 0.2. The rock size you can break will be around 47,940. If the rock had no resistance, if the rock had a 50% resistance, the rock size you can break would be 23,970 as an estimate. Now, the helix has an implicit of negative 30% to the rock's resistance. The surges will lower the rock's resistance by another 15% each. Most times you can see this work in real time on the right side of the screen while you mine. This percentage is the amount of power that will be subtracted from your total power. To make it all more simple, find out what your laser can do with a rock that has around 30% resistance. Then keep that in your head as a maximum estimate for the size of rocks for your specific laser setups. Now back to our topic at hand. Thanks for sticking with me there. I know that was a lot of math. Let's not waste any time. We're gonna do the Helix 2 on the front turret with a focus, a surge, and a stampede. The max rock size this can break will be around 30k. Just a stampede running, safe to say between 20 and 24k. Next we do the Arbor 2 with a focus module and a Riger C3. 
This is for the sub brakes. This will break around 5 to 6k high resist quant rock sub brakes. But this can also break a 10k low resist rock. You can opt for a Torn instead of a Ryger. But there will be a lot of occasions that the Ryger will put you over the top on a rock that the Arbor normally wouldn't be able to break. Finally, we do the Impact 2 with a Focus, a Ryger, and a Stampede. This is used for the 8k to 20k rock range, give or take. This is also used for the stubborn sub brakes that the Arbor cannot handle. I opt for this instead of the Hoff for its versatility on the fly and since it doesn't lower the rock's resistance. It works great even on the sub brakes that are just a little out of the Arbor's range. This build is intended to try to make your mining experience as easy but rewarding as possible. For this build, we will get 40k rocks out of your head. Even 30k rocks will be considered the very top end of what we are hunting for. So to sum things up, for the initial breaks, around 6 to 7k with under 50% resistance, Arbor. Between 7 to 20k, Impact. 20 to 30k, probably the Helix. 90% of your sub breaks will be done with the Arbor. 10% with the Impact. That pretty much wraps it up. I would like to say like and subscribe if you enjoyed and want more Star Citizen content. You can also join our cult of mining at the link above. I would like to say a big thank you to all the people that have supported me so far. If you would like to do the same, links in the description and up on the screen. Good luck out there.